Yes. Yeah, all good. So appreciate you coming on. I know this is kind of random, so we've never met you in person. Uh, we uh, reached out to you on Instagram and said, hey, hey, we'd love to have you on. And um, I'll introduce myself. Um, I'm, I'm Matt. I'm the one that reached out to you on Instagram. Uh, and I'm Jimmy, and we're cousins. Yeah, and then we got Brian behind the scenes doing all the uh, the tech stuff that sent you the original email link. And um, so he's our cousin. So we're three cousins. Uh, we've been doing this. This is our 10th football season. Um, so in 10 years, we've had one uh, winning season, and that's when you were uh, playing on a team in 2016. So uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for those that maybe don't remember you. It's been eight year, you know, seven years since you've been there. So why don't you introduce yourself yeah. tell us a little about uh, who you are and uh, what you did with Nebraska. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you all uh, for doing this, man. Like, thank you for the coverage. I think uh, any time that, you know, people that are from Nebraska and passionate about the game and, and do coverage, it's important. So I appreciate you guys first. And then um, I'm Kyron Williams, originally from Shreveport, Louisiana, and uh, I was a part of the Nebraska team 2014, 2018. So, uh, yeah, that's me. All right, fantastic. So, uh, really, you know, we, we've been making posts about you all week uh, when it comes to kind of your history with Nebraska. And, um, you know, really your your junior year was really your standout year. But, you know, your first year, you played with uh, Bo Pelini um, yeah. and that staff. And then you switched to Mike Riley. So, we have a, a bunch of guys on the team right now that we're with. Uh, for sure, for sure. So, have you been back to campus uh, since – you know, you, you graduated and everything. And if so, you know, what's, uh, have, you know, have you met rule? What's your impression? How do you think things are going and going to progress in the future here? Yeah, I got a, I got a chance to meet him earlier this year. So I actually moved down. I don't live in Nebraska anymore. I moved down to Houston um, uh, this, this past summer, but early in the spring, I was able to go meet rule and those guys and they have a great staff over there. Uh, I think where we can, where we can get better is just like how he was saying yesterday, most people, when that losing shit starts, they start to look left and right. I'm sorry. I don't know if we. Oh, you're good. Good you're good too. Uh, where, where that losing stuff starts is when you look, when you, when something goes wrong and everybody's like, oh, here we go again. I think we just have to continue to try to train that mentality and change that mentality wherever it is. Like, cause you never know. It could be the camera dude. Like the camera dude could be the cancer. You know what I'm saying? Like you never know. And it's just like, who is that person in here who doesn't really believe that this shit is going to happen? I think when we when you look at a guy like a coach Bo, it's a reason why he said nobody outside of this room is your friend. If you think if mm -hmm. you think these people are your friends, you're highly mistaken because it's going to be the same people that turn against you. So I think it's having that mentality and understand like, hey, we all we got, and when we go out here, we all we got. When we come back, we all we got. And so I, I love what those guys are doing. Uh, I think Coach Rule is he's changing it. You can see it's changing. You can you can because. Me personally, what I saw from from Frost's staff was like we get beat by fifty six, and then the next week we go in Ohio State, number four in the country. That's probably like thirty five at least hung on us, if not thirty five to three, thirty five to seven. And that's no shots at them. I'm just talking about mentality. I'm talking about what's happening outside oh, yeah. of who's just the head coach because there's there's a lot of different positions in that building outside of just the head coach. You know, there's fifty other positions that are in there that are vital to winning. You know what I mean? So. But I, I love what those guys are doing, man. I think they're on the right track. Our, our buddy Ross says cursing is encouraged. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it does, it does happen it does all the time. All the time. time. Uh, yeah. no, I, I can tell you, we're pretty uh, – we're unscripted. We're on that, we don't even edit our stuff. So what, what we're doing is exactly what's going to post online. But, um, yeah, you know, I think you make a good point. You talk about the culture of a team. And you went from a Bo Pelini winning culture. Yeah, we didn't win a lot of big games with Bo Pelini's staff, but we, we were 9-3, 10-2. I think the last season that uh, you were there, I think we were at six to seven because we won a bowl game. Or uh, no, we lost to USC in the bowl game um, that year. You had a couple block kicks in that game. Um, yeah, for sure. But you know, you, you talk about that culture of change, and uh, that's got to be tough because then Riley started off with a losing record. Then we have a really good season. Then went another losing record. How did that culture change from from his second year to his third year? How did that mindset change on the team? And was it a was it a culture shift? Like what what happened from that second to third year that was the big turn of, turn of events? I think for us it was a chance to actually be in a defense for more than one year. You know, actually get some cohesiveness to where we're not on the fly during the game trying to communicate a brand new fucking defense that that we've never ran before. Like, you know, I think just being able to be in be in some situations, play good on good, go against Tommy and and uh 
and Jay West and Brandon Riley and Zoe and those guys and us really be able to go good on good and run all of our different different defenses. They give us different looks and see that shit for two years straight. And then now when we come into that second year, we're playing Oregon and it's going down to the wire. We're not nervous. We've played these defenses before. We're not out here thinking. We're just playing ball. You know, so I think that was the big jump for us. And I would have loved to see us keep our defensive coordinator. I would love us to see see us keep Banker that senior year because there's no telling what we would have done. Like, I mean, I was second in Big Ten in interceptions and, you know. 18th nationally? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, we – we, there's no telling how that story is, is written. So I just think these guys are seeing the same thing from Rule and those guys are getting a second year to be in this defense, a second year to be in this offense or – I mean, Dylan, he's coming in as a freshman, but some of those other guys, they're getting time to learn the offense. You know what I mean? So I, I think I think it'd be fine. I think it'd work out fine. Speaking of that Oregon game, you had a pretty big, pretty, pretty big pass breakup at the end there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I I, I wish I could have got my hands on him, bro. But like I said, maybe that was Granny like, nah. <laughs> that was sweet. We talked about that for a while, I remember. Wasn't that like the – it was really early in the season. We played the first or second game of the year. Like, we played really early, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So that would that would might that might have been like the third game of the season because I think the first game I started with Fresno, and then okay. I think the next game I think was uh was Oregon. So yeah, man, like just being able to be on the field with dudes like a Nate Gary, you know what I mean? Like a dude who's been there before. He's 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 played in some big games in big, you know what I mean? In big times, like he's like, look, you know, we working together, and so I think that was that was a big part of it too. You know, having dudes back there that's been there before. Yeah, and then they, they Gary played Luke Gifford. You got and newbie on the field. You just, again, the guys on the roster, man. Just you got you play with some ballers. That that's that'd be really cool. Again, and you got your roommate. Uh, uh, we have, have talked to we have talked to Brandon Riley too. He's a good dude. He's a good yeah. friend. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Um, so I, I think again about going back to the house State game yesterday as a as a defender and a previous uh, black shirt. We have our defense that's playing really balls out yesterday, and our offense, you know, did okay, but then they struggle in the red zone. Is it hard as a defender, not hard to go keep playing and balling out, but what's that mindset and how do you, what conversations are going on between offense and defensive, if any, say like, hey man, like you guys got to score, we're doing our job, like let's, let's go. Like not in a no, kind of way, but like, do those conversations happen at all? We did, and I hate to, I hate to like put it like it's war, but we're the fucking Navy SEALs. We don't get, we don't get, we going out there. How many ever times we got to go out here? How many ever times we got to make sure they don't score? If we got to score, that's what we got to do. So mm -hmm. I think as your team develops, that shit happens when you're doing mat drills at 5 a.m. in the middle of the summer. You don't build that during the season. You build that in the off season when you don't feel like getting up and it's 4.30 in the morning and it's 47 degrees in Nebraska. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Like, that's how you build that mentality when you go and get on the field. You know what I mean? So I think you, you're seeing it from those dudes. And, I mean, I think they did a great job. Like I said, I think we had some deep balls that happened in the first half, but I don't think the second half we had as many of those. So that that's showing that, okay, hey, we're learning, we're developing, we're taking what we learned in the first half and taking it to the second half. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we the first responders, bro. It ain't no – because <laughs> we, we – we, when Tommy was there, they ran option. We ran some option. You know what I'm saying? Even with the option, everybody who's ever played option, especially in eight-man football in Nebraska, can tell you one thing. There's going to be fumbles. That just happens in option football. It's a part of the game. You know what I mean? So it's like, who am I to complain? That's my – that how how the good defenses see it is, okay, well, this is my time to get a strip fumble, an interception, or get me some more stats. You know, so it's more it's more about you and you guys rather than you know you versus the offense. Say, hey, we're a team, and just because they didn't score doesn't mean we we can, don't have to go do our Let's job. Let's get on the ball back, you know. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny I called it too. Right, right when uh, we got them down to what like the ten yard line uh, or something, we had a really good uh, special teams play where we got them down you know, inside the twenty. And I was like, man, this would be a really good time for uh, for a turnover. That'd be really nice. I actually posted it on Facebook. Said, man, like great play. We gotta get them, get a turnover. Hard dog next play interception. Uh, I wanted to take it to the house because I was like, points are not guaranteed here. We didn't get right. none there, but right, yeah, yeah, man. I think that's that first. That's that first responder mentality, bro. It's like as long as we got a yard to defend, 
we got a yard to defend. If we, you know what I mean? We on that one yard line. That's just, that's what we got to defend, you know? Yeah, yeah we had a great uh, roll line stop yesterday too, a fourth down stop yeah. yesterday. That was really yeah, helpful for, sure. for our D. Uh, we did get a question from one of our uh, our followers here, Donnie. He asked, uh, do the guys now um, or even guys after you left, do they reach out to former players? Do they have, like, is there a um, an outlet within the program to say, hey, here's some guys you can reach out to to talk to that played your position? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. I think it just happens naturally. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's, you know, in the world that we have with social media, a lot of younger dudes will hit us up and reach out. And I mean, uh, when I was living there, when I was living in the city, I'd be back and forth around the stadium and seeing guys. Like, I really I hung out a lot of times and, and trained with like Thomas Fedoni and Danny Kalen and Davon Hall and those guys. And so, um, yeah, I think when you are part of uh, of Nebraska and you're a black shirt and things like that, like you're always welcome. Like I've never felt, you know, not welcome. Um, so, and I think that that is like kind of the cheat code to going to a Nebraska. It's a different, it's a different vibe. It's a different like mentality. You know what I mean? Okay. That, that's cool. That's awesome. uh, so I know we, we, we talked about defense a lot. We've talked a little bit about offense. So, you know, looking back at the game yesterday, what we have a lot of negative thoughts about some of our play calling. Again, we're fans. So we see a lot of these screen passes, a lot of screens, screen, swing passes. My, right. my thing, the thing right. I don't like about those, and we, we've talked about it before, is they're not working, but we keep doing them. What's What are your thoughts on that? Like, How, how do you see our offense? You know, we, we move the ball, and then we yeah. struggle in, in the red zone. But then we have a chance to go down and win the game, and we do a couple screen passes or do a wide receiver uh, screen or wide receiver swing pass. And it's not working, but we keep doing it. And I think that's that's really frustrating. What do you, what do you see? Is that frustrating to you too? I mean <laughs> – I mean – to me, I try to see it through the lens of if that's what we practice during the week, then you we don't want to come out here and bake a new cake. If we've been we've been making peanut butter cookies Monday through Friday, and then we come out here and you ask for Oreo cookies, it's like, well, bro, I've been making peanut butter Monday through Friday, you know. <laughs> so it's like, um, I think you know if that, if that's what we we've been doing now, maybe that means we change what we're doing Monday through Friday in our preparation for the next week. You know, I think college football is one of those things there's a reason that it's 12 weeks, you know, you're not all the way a developed finished product by week six, week seven, you know, you might not be a finished product till you hit week nine, 10 and you really rolling, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think we can take some shots down the field, but we have to have the protection to do that. Do we have the protection to do a five step drop back and be able to read the defense? You know, um, do we, do we have that? Do we have the tools to do the things that the fans want to see? Because, I mean, I'm sure the coaches want to see it too, but they also know what's under the hood, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 can't, you can't make a Honda be a Maserati. That's, you know, okay. If you got a Honda, you got you to be a Honda, you know. No, I, I like the way you put that because, you know, obviously a lot of fans were frustrated with all the screen passes, <laughs> with all the screen passes. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe, you know, you try to run the ball. Maybe we're not running the ball that well. I thought we actually ran the ball better better than I expected half. yesterday. Half for sure. um, I don't know why we didn't, you know, continue to do that. Uh, that was, but I do like your perspective of, you know, if that's the way you guys plan on it. Obviously, they must have watched plenty of film over Ohio State for the last few weeks to mm -hmm. see that there was something there. But we just are – wide receiver blocking is is not stellar so and, so and i think i think especially on the blocking side that you bring that up i think that's a mentality thing that's a mentality thing because when you're blocking another grown man there's a mentality there that has nothing to do with athleticism and everything about want to so i think there was a lot of times that if we could have had a block on the outside a little bit longer maybe barney could have sprung it you know what i'm saying but that's about mentality and I think Rule knows that and he sees that. He's trying to figure out how to trigger that in some guys because every guy isn't triggered. And I know it's going to sound crazy. Everybody's not triggered by NIO money. Everybody's not triggered by – some dudes are triggered by social media posts in the days that we live in. Maybe you need to shout that dude out on Instagram or so. And I know that's crazy to say, but, like, certain things trigger certain dudes. Like, some dudes you need to yell at them. Some dudes you need to – coddle them you know what i'm saying like certain things make certain dudes go so we just got to figure out what makes those dudes click and what are going to make them go to what i've seen because i mean I, I was around coach dub uh keith williams and i mean coach dub breeds dogs Devonte adams tyreek hill yeah. and this goes on right um gotta be able to breed dogs to if that's what you want you know yeah that's what we need <laughs> <laughs> we do have a, a couple of more questions you, you mentioned social media um, and we asked this question to Brandon Kenny too, because when 
you know, Brandon Kenny he was there. He was, you know, maybe five years after Facebook really uh, took off. Um, and Twitter came out. Yeah, so Twitter. Like and, and so now you were kind of in the heart of it where now it's big. Social media, Twitter's big. Now you got Instagram. You got all these things coming out. When you play, what kind of pressure, this is from Joel, by the way, how much pressure do you feel from fans and from social media? And then <laughs> you said, do you ever hear the good stuff from the fans <laughs> and social media? So right. how did that impact you as a player or, or did it? Uh, well, as a player, I would say you hear it regardless if you want to or not, because as a player, you want to hear the good, right? And then you know once you have a bad game, you're still going to go click on that same app that you clicked on to hear the good stuff. So mm-hmm. for me personally, I would always try my best to to filter out who's good, who's being good for me and who's actually rooting me on. You know what I mean? Like if I had some of my mentors, you know, like a Tony Veland reach out or, you know, Tony Veland's his feedback to me is going to mean more to me than the random guy who is just you know, on his couch, just talking crap, right? Right. But but I think it's, uh, I think you got to all, you gotta always got to take it with a grain of salt because you never Superman, but you never, you know, as trash. Either. You know, you just got to be able to, and I think with young dudes, especially because a lot of those dudes aren't mature enough to understand, like there's some maturity that grow that goes along with being in college football. There's, there's a reason why you have freshmen and seniors, right? Like, a freshman is not going to come in with that mature mentality of how to take social media and how to handle NIL. He's just not because he's a 17, 18 year old kid, you know? Yep. So, well, perfect example, uh, cornerback Lamar Jackson. Um, <laughs> we, we kind of harped on him for t- the first couple of seasons. Uh, he was, you know, a big time recruit, whatever. And he struggled. Uh, but eventually he got really good, and we talked a lot of we said you know talked a lot of good, good about him. So, well, and, uh, and our, our our I guess our our trash talk was more like this: the guy's got the talent to right. be really good, but we're not seeing it on the field. Like exactly. that's frustrating. And then all of a sudden, he's just like junior year, his senior year was an absolute stud, and then he goes pro. Right. And like absolutely right. huge fan of Lamar Jackson, and so uh, right. kind of same thing with Tommy Hill. Like, where are you gonna play, man? Offense, defense, and now he's mm-hmm. you know. Hopefully he gets back on the field soon, but uh, we we try our best as fans to not be negative on kids that are again 18, 19, 20, 21 years old because we're you know we're damn near forty now. Uh, <laughs> it's just, and, but it's as you you you're our NFL team. Huskers are the NFL cool. team for Nebraska, and um, they just want to win and be good. Yeah, and, <laughs> so, and so, right. so we try to right. spin it in a positive way as best we can, and um, try not to talk trash. More of like we see the potential, what's going on, and yeah, right. Right. No, I think uh, because you bring up Lamar, I mean, he's a good friend of mine, like just Lamar specifically, like he's a guy that he has all the intangibles. But sometimes when you're on that field, you can have all the intangibles in the world. But if the game is moving fast for you, the game is moving fast for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so for a guy like myself, like I wasn't the biggest, strongest, fastest, but the game moved slow for me at times and I was able to make plays, you know. So um, I think I mean, you're seeing it with like you said with Tommy right now. The game is moving slow for Tommy. He's out there. It's easy for him because he's seen yep. it. He's been able to see it in spring ball, see it for a whole season, see it again for spring ball, see it for a whole season, and now it's like it's slow, you know. Yep, that's that's great. Yeah, again, it's um, it's it's hard as fans, and and again, you you're from Louisiana, right? And yeah. what what was that like coming to Nebraska and having? Is that like? Did you ever feel like that fan pressure? Like, man, these fans are hardcore is that what you saw from like again like your lsu's you know in your territory yeah. where you grew up yeah what was that mentality and what does that look like for you yeah i mean i think anytime you play college football bro you're i mean you're a part of the one percent you know what i mean like so there's going to be pressure there already you're you're already trying to defeat define the odds by making it to a college you're defining the odds even more by starting and then to then go and then be the best in the sport in college football. I mean, it's like you're trying to be the one percent of the one percent. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think there's pressure there already. And then knowing that you have a fan base like in Nebraska behind you, I think it just adds that pressure. But it's like either pressure gonna bust pipes or it's gonna make diamonds. It's so it's all about how are you built? What are you really about? Like, are you putting that time in in the off season or are you not? You know, because it's got either way. It's gonna show. It's gonna show on Saturday or Sunday whenever you play. You know. 
All right. That's a good point. Well, we do have a couple more, a couple more questions. Uh, we'll get to the football one first. Uh, question. So this is by our buddy Ross, uh, who said, uh, cursing is encouraged. Uh, what's the most frustrating thing that you think or things you've seen this year? Uh, and then what are some things that surprised you so far this year? Oh, uh, I think I would say one of the most frustrating is probably like special teams. I think I wish I could see us because I know what that can do to a game. I want to say like any time you have a big special teams play, it increases your chance of winning by 87 percent. So that's like a punt block or a kick return or a punt return. If we get two or three of those, you know, where are we sitting at this season? You know, so I would say that's probably the most frustrating. And I think the thing that surprised me is just like how cohesive our offense has looked with Dylan back there. I think we were off to a really good start those first couple of games, and then now we're kind of seeing a lull. But, I mean, most dudes have that lull their whole sophomore year. This dude is having – he had, like, what, a, a bad game or two, you might be able to say. But um, I think he's really surprised me with, like, how he's taking it. Like, he don't look like he's down on himself. He looks like every time he's coming back out there trying to get better, he's not one of those dudes that's just, like – head down and you know what I mean so he's really surprised me this year and I think how the offense is formed around him I, I think mm -hmm. it has been good yeah I, I can't imagine again coming out as a freshman but I mean we got some other freshmen on this team that I think are surprising too with Ja'Cory Barney yeah. um yeah, and then for sure. we got, uh, Carter Nelson man let, for sure. your thoughts on Ja'Cory man that guy is coming in as a he's freshman a he's ridiculous yeah He's a dog, bro. He gives me Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill-ish vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a dude that he can do a lot of different things with his hands on the ball. I think if he does learn how to route run a little bit better, I think that can help just dropping his hips, getting out of breaks, because we need that. Right now, we don't have the offensive line to block for it. So, we can't spend a lot of time in your breaks. You got to be able to – if it's a 10-yard dig, it's got to be a 10-yard dig right now coming out, hands ready. You know what I mean? So, I think those are the things, like, development-wise, like we talked about, like, that we can see if we can get those things developed. I mean, bro, who's going to be able to touch us if you got Thomas on one side, you got Barney on another side, you know what I mean? You got a guy like even a Malachi Coleman. I mean, I've been saying, I don't know how many years he's been there, but if we can get somebody in that receiver room to teach that guy how to run full speed, drop his hips and come out of a break and make plays on the ball, he's going to be dangerous. But right now he's only dangerous going forward. If we can make this guy dangerous coming back at a 45, running 90 degree angles, it's a it's a whole different ball game. 100. Like Jalen Lloyd and stuff too. Yeah, yeah Jalen Lloyd, another guy. I think him and Malachi Coleman yeah. again, Carter Nelson, Jacory Barney. You get these Jaylen guys Lloyd. in the groove with Raiola and growing again, growing up and growing in the game in Nebraska with Raiola. I think it's going to be dangerous, and to me, that's super exciting. Again, building for the future, not necessarily building for the now. I think we see some of those future pieces there, and it's going to be exciting to see how Dylan grows with those guys on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, for sure. And I, don't, I didn't mean to leave out Dylan. I mean, uh, not uh, Dylan, uh, Jalen Lloyd. I mean, yeah. Jalen is like, flies. Like, he actually Ferrari. trained out there with uh, – Yeah, right, Ferrari. He he trains with uh, Steve Warren out there in Omaha. So, I, yeah. I had a chance to be around him and, and see him train in the summertime. So, like, like, we have all the tools, man. It's just about – at the end of the day, we're playing a game where we're trying to be the 1% of 1%. And then when you're trying to do that, it's the little things. It's the small things that make you the best team in the country. You know, like, it's not what most people think, like, oh, it's these huge-ass ideologies and all that. Bro, it's, it's fucking running, dropping your hips, coming out and actually catching the ball. If you do that consistently, time over time, you're going to have a great completion percentage. You're going to win games. Like, it's not crazy stuff. 100%. Yeah. Um, here, I'll let you ask Percival's question. Okay. We've got kind see. of a funny, a funny question about game day. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So Mike says, and this is a buddy of ours. So <laughs> he said, all right, it's game day. You're at the stadium. Which food item are you going with? Fairberry hot dog or are you getting that Valentino slice? He didn't even say I'm getting that Valentino I would throw slice. in there too. I'm I'm probably getting that Valentino slice. I'm leaving a hot dog for my girl. I don't know. <laughs> Valentino slice just hits different the game. It's wild. Yeah, it's different. It's just like it comes out way hotter than when you go get it. It's like you almost might as well just wait and get one at the game. <laughs> for yeah, sure. I I don't have Valentinos outside of the Husker football. I really don't. Ever. Hardly ever. Right. Right. Um and so uh, Donnie asked, you know, would you agree that the foundation is set for the program moving forward? And we talked a little bit about that, but do you feel like that that's where rule is at now and, and moving forward in the next you know, two, three, four, five years? 
Yeah, bro. I think we have a foundation set, especially if the program is really behind them and really for him. I think when I personally seen it for myself, like we had a really good team with Bo, but the core of like our AD wasn't really behind them, you know? And then I think we had a really good like sophomore, junior, junior season coming or freshman, sophomore, junior season coming into Raleigh. But then like the backing for him kind of was like, oh, do we really believe in this? Right. So like, I think where we are with rule, everybody in there is believing and whoever isn't believing, I'm sure after this year, they're going to be out of there and all the, as, as far as the field goes. And I, I know how you guys are hearing me talk about, it. I'm talking about like, it's a, it's pretty, it's like the NFL, bro. Like where we are now, especially with guys getting paid, like it's not just about the guys on the field. It's about like your GM and your owner. You know what I'm saying? It's about who's forming the thing too. Like those, that that's really important. So I think the foundation is there all around and now it's just time for us to like start stepping into it. So. Okay. Do you think that there's any personnel changes that he needs to make after this season? I mean, we got to get some position coaches in there, man. I'm going to just be real. Like, we got to get a receivers coach. We got to get a receivers coach. We got to get – we got to get some motivators in there. We got to get some people that can, like – because you need that person that's that fire drill of when shit goes wrong, let's run towards the fire. Let's not start looking at each other and whose fault is it. Is the quarterback's fault? Is it the O-line's fault? Is it the – no, this is what we're doing. This, you know what I mean? Like we we came here to win, and we just threw an interception. Who cares? Let's let's go get it. You know what I mean? So that's what I would like to see. Okay, and you know it's, it's kind of interesting. One thing we've talked about uh, a couple times is that winning culture, and the fact that we haven't had a winning culture at Nebraska since 2016, uh, or a winning season. Again, it, that culture of wanting to win is there, but not winning. When we have guys from this year that exit the program. I, I believe we're going to have a winning season this year, by the way. Uh, I think we beat UCLA. I think we win. I think we have a chance to win all, all four of our last games. But I think we just win anywhere from two to four. Um, but I don't think we lose four games. I, I don't think that's going to happen. But we have guys that haven't had a winning season. How does that mindset change when you get guys out of the program that have never won uh, or season mm-hmm. as far as a winning record? And now you have guys that have, and that continues moving forward. How does that mindset change from a culture perspective? Uh, I mean, I think the way – so you're saying how, like, to, to change that culture? I think you got to do it in small steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to win in the offseason. Like, you got to make it to where – because I, I remember specifically, like, when we got there with Bo, it was important to be on the field with your shoes tied by four by 445. And that was a win. You start there because who else in the country is up at this time, let alone with their shoes on, standing on the line, at 445 like that's where it starts at so i think if we can start with those small wins it's going to teach dudes how to win like because that's that's something that bo used to say either you i'm gonna keep it a, that was his thing i'm gonna keep it a spade a spade keep a spade a spade either you're a winner or you're a loser in this life so if you're a winner you're going to figure out how to win if you're a loser you're going to figure out how to lose and it's it's my job to filter those dudes out as being a head coach you know it's just rules job to be able to filter out who's winners and who's losers and get more winners in, in the building than losers. I understand. And there's a lot going around about Kirby smart. And uh, this was a statement that he learned from saving was tuck your shirt in. And he talks about guys. That's the first, if you're not coming to the practice with your shirt tucked in, you ain't, you, you better restart and reset. And we didn't even talk about last week and Damon Benning mentioned on the show last week after the second, the first half of Indiana, Damon Benning and Greg Sharp were talking about coming out of the second half, you got to win something. You either have to stop the run or stop the pass. But right now, if you stop the run game and they beat you over the top, at least you're doing something right. You're winning something. He goes, and that's what they talk about, kind of small steps. And we're like, man, it's like getting up and making your bed in the morning. You wanted something already. You did something positive in the day, and you got to build upon that. So I, I think, again, shoes tied. Like you're ready positive to go. mindset as well. Yeah. I think there was another coach. There's another coach mm-hmm. in the D1. I'm trying to think who it was, but he talked about a kid not getting enough playing time because he never had his shoes tied. And he was dead. Right. His shoes keep falling off because he's never had his shoes come tight all the time. It's like, well, damn, like you're not getting playing time because you can't keep your shoes tight. That's crazy. Start but that is shoes. Yeah, yeah. But that again, start yeah. tying your damn shoes. Like yeah. it's up here. That's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, we're trying to we're trying to grow men too, right? We're trying to make men who's going to take care of their children, men who are going to, you know, be good citizens in in our community. You know what I'm saying? So like. 
if you can't do the smallest shit right, if you're already going to school for free and you're making money and you can't be here at the time that we say and have your cleats on, like, okay, I'm just going to go find somebody else. I'm sure there's somebody else who wants that 200000 that you get in there and whatever else and that uniform yeah. and all those things, you know? So I think it's just about not having a – not wavering on who we are. Who are we? What do we believe in? And if we believe in it, then let's stand on it and let's just fucking win football games. Hell yeah. I really like that perspective. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's nice to hear somebody from inside, you know. I'm going to ask one more Nebraska question. I'm gonna, I, then I want to talk about just kind of what you're doing now. So I know you're pretty yeah. pretty busy on social media, on Instagram. I see you post a lot. So I want to talk about that too. We got a little bit of time left. So uh, Ross yeah. had one more question. He said, any good inside, like funny or really cool stories from your time at Nebraska? Oh, uh, some cool or fun, funny stories. I would say. And you can actually share. <laughs> I mean, you can share. Whatever. Yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see like I'm trying to see like what I can share that I ain't gonna get nobody else in trouble. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have your boys back too. Right, right. Probably a cool story, man. Was um getting a chance to like meet dudes like Sue and Eric Crouch and um, like just getting a perspective on the game, bro. Cause I just think that's like, especially when they being open to you and they just being one, like real one-on-one -on -one with you, bro. Like that's the game that you can't pay for. You know what I'm saying? Like E Crouch telling me about his experience on his Heisman run, you know what I'm saying? And like what it was like being able to chase his dreams of being in the NFL and our, our kind of like, our paths being similar, you know, having to play outside leagues and shit, trying to get there, you know what I mean? Like doing what we trying to do to, you know, accomplish our dreams. Like uh, that that was pretty cool being able to, you know, meet dudes and be around dudes like that. That's cool. That's cool. And Sue had a Heisman run too. He should have won. <laughs> he should have won. Right, uh, right, right. Him too. Yeah, Eric Krause is good. Down. We've had the opportunity to meet him and talk to him. And, uh, man, it's just – some of these guys that we've met since uh, we've been doing our show are just like, like you. I mean, just so down to earth and willing to just share, you know, experience. And it's really cool for us because, again, you're, you're younger than us. And it's like, damn, like we uh, – same with Brandon Kenny. Like, dude, you're one of, like, our favorite wide receivers. He goes, I was. Like, it's just, again, you're you're our pro guy. So, um, you know, we always enjoy watching you. So it's great to have you on and get to talk to you. Yeah, and, and, again, sure. it means a lot to us. And uh, just be able to talk to former players and – um, talking about kind of what you're doing now. So you, you've been out, out of uh, Nebraska, what, 2017, 2018? Uh, so yeah, what yeah. Been doing since then, what are you doing now? What's what's your life story? Share as much as you want. Yeah. So, yeah, I came out, uh, went and, and worked out for a few teams. And uh, instead of going and doing like Peace Squad, for me, it worked out better to play in what was called the Alliance of American Football. And so um, there I got a chance to work with and meet like some dudes that I looked up to my whole life, from Hans Ward to Troy Palomalu to Michael Vick. Um, and that was a blessing, you know what I mean, and get paid to play the game. And, I mean, unfortunately, um, that season ended in, like, eight weeks. Um, and then so after that, the goal was to, you know, continue playing, signed to the CFL, went up to, went up to Edmonton for a while, uh, then came back here, played in the USFL, and then I uh, tore my labrum. So my, my – Goal has been to be to get back on the field and finish. Um, I don't know if that's going to be back in the USFL or I mean U UFL now, um, yep. or you know what that looks like. But that's that's my goal. And then outside of that, I also own a brand. It's called Bet on Yourself Clothing. Uh, I also own a company called Bet on Yourself Studios, where we do photo video work for like multiple businesses uh, in the Omaha, Houston, Miami area. And um, yeah, man, I, I love working in the community too. Like community is pretty much like my goal of how I can make an impact outside of the game. You know, I think when you can just be around people that truly don't want anything from you outside of some help, you know, I think that that is a, uh, that's, that's kind of where I find my fulfillment. Yeah, that, 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 awesome. I checked out your, uh, your bet on, bet on yourself clothing, man. Yeah. I, I'm going to give myself a shirt. I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, damn, that's out. a sweet shirt. So I'll have to get yeah, one. Sure. But I, I, sure. I appreciate what you're doing, man. I, and I see you on your videos running all the time on Instagram and keeping yourself in shape and uh, you're looking good out there. So I, I appreciate you. You know, what you do for the community and, you know, being down in Houston and the, uh, the, the sweaty part of the nation, as I call it. <laughs> right. Uh, right. We back in the sweaty part, man. We, I mean, I lived in Nebraska for 10 years, man. In Nebraska, one thing I can say, um, there's no, there's no place like Nebraska, just the love there, the community there, um, how people show show love and how people take care of each other. There's nothing like it. So um, I'm very appreciative for the 10 years I spent, you know, in Lincoln and in Omaha. Yeah, 
All right, man. Well, that's awesome. Very cool. Jimmy, you got anything else that you want to want to chat? We don't have any other questions right now, so anything else you want to share, anything uh, you have in mind? Um, all right, Jimmy, you got anything else? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say. I mean, I seen the Satterfield question. I, I'm not one to throw coaches under the bus. Um, I think, I think he knows what we have in that room, and so I would like to see what the rest of the season looks like, and then I think we make a decision. But um, I'm not one to call for dudes' heads because I wouldn't want somebody to call for mine. So, okay, fair. Hey, fair enough. Yeah, I, like that perspective. yeah I really wish you the best of luck if getting back on the field because we love watching you. Yeah, and. Um, you know, we, great we got some chat with as well. You know, we got Tommy Armstrong now playing for Omaha Beef, and you know they want two yeah. championships back to back in the indoor football league. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a stud, and I know uh, we actually were trying to get Corey Ross on the show. Uh, the guy that um, runs the Omaha Beef, uh, he's trying to get yeah. us both Tommy and Corey. But uh, but we like yeah. to throw this out. We talk to character all the time too throughout the year. But yeah. if there's anybody you think that might enjoy this, I mean, feel free to send a message on Instagram or email and say, hey, like. The more you know, Pearson yeah. might want to join the show. Like to us, this is For just sure. fun. We try to reach out to players. We don't always get responses. So again, yeah. getting a response back from you as quick as we did. Again, just appreciate the love and appreciate coming on the show right. today. It's kind of why we started doing it, really. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate it, bro. To let y'all know, like I'm also working on the platform myself, so I might be reaching out to you guys to get some advice. So yeah. I appreciate you guys for having me on. It's a blessing, bro. All right, we're we in the area. Come have a beer with us. There you go. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll be in touch, man. All right, man. Y'all have a good day. Uh, appreciate it, Kyron, for joining the show. I mean, that was that was awesome. Again, Donnie, yeah, absolutely class act. That guy's um, a freaking stud. <laughs>